welcome to this edition of Dr. Q and U. And what we are going to talk about today is introducing new pets to each other. So I've had quite a few people um, ask me about um, bringing a new puppy into the household and how it really stresses out the cats and what we can do to help minimize that stress on the cats. And um, let's just dive right in. So uh, first of all, I have Maltse here, and she is a um, teenage girl, and very shy, very skittish, very difficult for her to even come out and be out in the household with the kids and the dogs and the animals and everything. She's always really shy, and so that may be a cat that you can relate to in your house. And so what I have done to prepare her for the um, addition of this new puppy um, into our home is I've actually acclimated her to being more comfortable with and associating this cat tree with being a place that she really wants to spend time. And so one of the ways that I've done that is um, I have catnip. Okay, so we want to use all the tools at our disposal. So behind me, I have a lot of tools. So before I do any kind of training session, I always want to gather those tools up and have them ready to go beforehand. And so you can check with my blog posts so that you can get more information about having a list of what kind of tools to have available um, before you get started. And so there you can see Mate has come down to um, give a little sniff to that catnip and it has gotten the puppy's attention. The puppy suddenly is very interested in what's going on here. She gets that there are some treats being handed out and she does not want to be left out. So I really appreciative of the fact that she's showing an interest but she's certainly not barking or whining or acting with any anxiety. And so because of that, I'm gonna go ahead and reward her with the treats that I have here. And I'm gonna tell you one of my very big secrets that you're really gonna to wanna to tune in on here on what I use for training treats. And one of my favorite things to use for training little puppies to sit quietly while they're waiting for their turn to be on camera is dry kibble cat food. There, I said it, I gave it away. Now you know, now you have my secret. So my secret is dry kibble cat food. It's high in protein and it's irresistible to most dogs. It's the right size because we want something that's really tiny that the dog's gonna be able to eat really quick and then be able to get uh, pay attention to you again and be back on track right away. And then of course, if you're training multiple species at the same time, like I am here, we have two animals that are able to have the same thing. And so I'm really, really happy about how this is going so far. I know we have a little bit of a ways to go. There's one of two ways of doing this. You can either create the puppy and let the cat be free, or you can create the cat and let the puppy be free to interact with the crate. How you want to do that is going to depend a little bit on individual personalities of the animals. So the most important thing is that we want the animals to all treat each other with the utmost respect. And we're going to talk about that. So I have this pressure scale that I like to use where I say with one is how much pressure that you would use to sort of like that. That's a one, okay, on a scale of one to ten. And a ten would be grabbing an animal as hard as you can with all of your might to make them do whatever it is that you need to do. Put the leash on, put the collar on, harness on, get them in the truck, whatever the case may be. So that's a ten. And Mao was kind enough to demonstrate what a one is. So that being our scale, what we want to have every interaction be is a scale of a five or less. Five or less. That is our goal. So when you're introducing two animals to each other, that is also the same scale that you're going to want to use. And so that means the puppy cannot bounce on the cat harder than a five or a six, and the cat cannot swat the puppy in the face and potentially cause an eye injury, which would of course be a 10, right? Any kind of blood is probably 11 on the scale. So that's, that's how that works. So when you're trying to decide what to do, who needs to be created, who needs to be loose, it probably is going to be the animal that's most likely 
likely to injure the other one and have the least self-control is probably the one that needs to be in the kennel situation. And then the one that is going to be more shy and skittish and fearful of this new arrangement is the one that needs to be free so that they can have the option to leave the scene if they just decide, oh, too much for me. I'm out of here. And so that is going to be your first step and how you can introduce a shy cat um, to a little puppy. And I'm so pleased right now because Wasabi the puppy has gone back to sleep. She doesn't care at all. And Mautze, who's normally horrified to be anywhere near um, anything new at all, is lounging in that sunny spot up there. It makes her a little bit hard to see, but she likes being up there. And uh, totally relaxed and comfortable in the presence of this new family member. So hopefully these are some good tips to get you started in the first steps of introducing um, cats and dogs to each other. Please leave comments down below so that I can answer more of your questions. And if this has been helpful to you, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, The One Dr. Q, T-H-E-1-D-R-Q. And we'll see you right here next time with more of my uh, secrets and tips on how to get the most amazing relationship that you ever thought possible with the animals in your life. Take care now. Bye-bye.